It was a success, I Cheers. think, as experiments go, right? As, you as don't far know as what, two and a half gallons of something to drink, well, you know, there could be what, something a lot worse than that You cake. don't know what you're going to oh, yeah. get. Welcome to Chop and Brew, everyone. I'm Chip Walton. In this episode, we're trading in malts and hops for something totally different, something I like to call spruce tip wine. When I first posted about this concoction on social media, fans offered some alternative names like pine wine, spruce ale, spruce juice. Regardless of what we call it, it's essentially this. A large volume of homemade spruce tip simple syrup diluted with water, fermented with a dry wine yeast, and then carbonated to a high volume of CO2. The result is unlike anything I've ever made before. A very bright, refreshing, lemon-lime, slightly piney, soda-like alcoholic beverage. Perfect for the summertime. In this video, I'll walk you through the process of making this spruce tip wine and share some tasting notes that I shot with Dono and Nico Ling, a home brewer who visited us here in Minnesota from Vienna. Coincidentally, Nico brought us a treat from Austria, his own beer, one soured with a native pine cone. So there's a pine theme, and I'll link to that lanyap in the video description below. Before we get started, a quick shout out to BSG Handcraft for their ongoing support of Chop and Brew. Check out BSG's full line of home brewing ingredients at bsghandcraft.com. Thanks also to Imperial Yeast, whose full catalog of ale, lager, and kvike yeast are hanging out over at imperialyeast.com. And huge love to our wonderful Patreon supporters, including new patrons Nick Van Beek, Jorge Castro, and Justin Shepard. Join them in supporting the show at patreon.com slash chop and brew. Let's go get some of that spruce juice. The first step to making a spruce tip wine is making a large batch of spruce tip simple syrup. I already have a video of that process on Chop and Brew's website and YouTube channel, but I'll quickly summarize it here because it's important for the spruce tip wine. Start by picking new spruce tips. Around this time of year, mid to late spring, you'll see these light green fresh growth tips on spruce and fir trees. This is what you're looking for. These early season tips are feathery and soft and lend a citrusy, herbal sort of note. They are not yet woody and tough like the actual spruce branches and needles they'll become, so they don't yet give off that over-the-top resiny, piney flavor. Pick a small bucket or bag of these young spruce tips Bring them home and give them a good rinse. Huge disclaimer, as when foraging for any sort of wild craft, culinary, or brewing ingredient, be careful of areas known to have been treated with herbicides or pesticides, or just any ingredient that's not safe for consumption. Play it safe, y'all. Using scissors or a knife, roughly cut or chop the tips up a bit to expose more of the soft needles and green branch. To make the syrup, bring one part water, and one part sugar to a boil. For my smaller batches of syrup, which we use for cocktails, glazes, general sweetener, I do two cups water to two cups sugar. Once boiling, add one part of the chopped up spruce tips, or two cups. Let that steep in the simmering sugar solution for a few minutes. Remove the pan from the heat and let it steep for three hours to overnight. This infuses the syrup with the young, sprucey, citrusy flavor. I always let mine sit overnight and let it naturally cool. The next morning, I strain the syrup several times to leave all needle pieces behind. Pour the syrup into clean, sanitized jars and try to use it within two or three months. As I mentioned, my wife and I use this syrup in cocktails, it's amazing in a gin and tonic, for glazes and marinades, or maybe even just for like general sweetening of coffee, tea, replacing sugar in uh, dessert recipes, etc. Shortly after making a small batch, I got the wild idea to make a spruce tip fermentation. But I knew I was going to need way more than just two small jars. So I made a much larger batch of the syrup, a gallon total, scaling everything up in the process to a gallon. This video is from 2017. Once I had my gallon bucket of syrup, I stored it in the garage fridge, and to be honest, I totally forgot about it. That gallon sat for a full year in the small fridge. It actually froze a bit and then thawed. In spring 2018, I was amazed to find it still in really good shape, visibly and by taste. So I made the spruce tip wine. 
here in the basement on the day that we're finally mixing this. I made this spruce tip syrup probably a year ago. But for some reason this magical gallon bucket in the garage fridge survived all last year, froze and then thawed over the cold winter. We literally unplugged that refrigerator in the winter because it just gets so cold it keeps everything cold slash freezes. In my trials beforehand I did one part to one part one part to two part water, one part to three part water. So I was aiming for this one part syrup to two part water, which based on my trials from last spring should have yielded me a 1074 OG. I hit 1058 here, about 14 and a half bricks. I think that's partly because of from sampling a little bit and testing the syrup. I was a little less than a gallon and I think I was a little generous on my gallons of water because I don't actually have a marker line. 1058 OG must or whatever you want to call it, sugar water of spruce tip syrup. Into that we pitched about a half of a packet of D47 uh, dry yeast. That was probably a little more but it's okay. It's spruce tip beer wine. Who knows what's supposed to happen here? Usually I use it for ciders or mead. The syrup itself, after a year, held up. Again, it's that really citrusy, obviously it's super sweet, um, but very citrusy, very lemon, lime, um, a little bit of pine, but not nearly as much as pine needles. If you were to cut up full growth, two year, three year growth pine needles and try to make a syrup out of that, it'd be way more resiny way more I think over the top pine. This is pine just starting to sneak in underneath the citrus. It's almost got a little bit of like juniper neeness to it. Some kind of these botanicals you'd expect to taste in a gin or an aquavit. Something like that. So um, I don't know if that's from sitting for a year that that came out but I don't remember it being this junipery um, almost getting to pine but I definitely still get the lemon lime which is awesome you know I'm just sitting here drinking syrup in my basement man oh the bucket smells super sprucey though there's as you can see or maybe not there's some like residual residue brown sticky icky ickiness that is probably what woody kind of solids came out of it so Pretty cool, man. Do it every year, boy. Do it every year. And now I'm out of syrup and I need to go drink a bunch of water to cut this. I pitched the yeast on May 21st, 2018, and I fermented it in the low 60s, which required using a tub of water and swapping out frozen water bottles to keep the temp down because my basement was in the upper 60s. On June 2nd, about a week and a half later, it was down from 1058 to about 1024, and still pretty cloudy as you can see in this hydrometer sample. But just a few days later, June 6, as you can see here, it was down to its final gravity of about 1012 and very clear. I kegged about two and a half gallons and hit it with a high volume of CO2 to create a spritzy effervescent beverage. And I'm not kidding when I say it turned out absolutely wonderful and was perfect for sipping on warm summer nights. Thankfully, I was able to squirrel away one bottle and got these tasting notes from Don O and visiting home brewer Nico Ling in early August. So here we are for the tasting notes. We're in the backyard. It's a beautiful night. The lighting got weird in the garage, but I'm here with Nico from Vienna, Austria. I'm here with Don O. Howdy. Nico just brought us this really interesting beer that you may or may not have already seen in a video. It was a beer, sour beer, soured by pine cone. Pine cone. And I was like, hold up. Yep. I've got one last bottle of this thing I want you to try. So this is the last bottle of the spruce juice, pine wine, needle McWeedle, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and this is our tasting notes of it. So this is basically two parts water to one part syrup fermented with wine yeast. And it tastes awesome. It's like so it's, it's taken me drinkable. a lot to not drink this I last know. bottle. It, it has a surprising white wine character. Well, that's an interesting observation. I've never really thought of that, but I could yeah, I, see that. It's, do all the people that have had it, it's the first time someone said that. I could see white grape. Yeah. yeah Most I've people never say Zima that. or Sprite. I don't know what that is. I know Sprite. Yeah. Zima it, it, in the like, lime, early I, 90s. I Sprite. Soda. <laughs> what did you say? I was going to say, back in the early 90s. Oh, yeah. when yeah. Like, Zima was basically but this we like, didn't have it in malt Europe, beverage. So I don't but know. It was sugar water and yeah. carbonated sugar water. But again, 
because it's that early growth spruce tips, it's not piney that much. It's a little piney, but no, it's just I, like... I expected a lot more pine. Could you make the syrup more piney? Yeah, by collecting them later in the year. Oh, and people that brew using spruce ales for or? Christmas beers, okay. they usually use woody, hard, poke you, give you splinter oh, pine. Okay. And now you're pulling real pine resin. So, But you got the really thing. soft cream right. one. So this is why we're getting this kind of like lemon lime, yeah, orangey, a little green and herbal. But everybody's noted, I mean, we went through a two and a half keg of it way too fast. It's like, it just tastes like soda, like a yeah, adult it, it soda. Yeah, it drinks like soda. It, oh. it drinks like a white wine spritzer. Yeah, the pine, I think maybe I thought it was a little bit more strong when I had it uh, a time or two ago. I've had this a few times now, a few, few weeks ago, maybe. <laughs> Um, I don't believe it. It's just kind of, well, what do you think? You've been having this many times. I mean, do you think it's the same or do you think it's m mellowed a little? No, I feel like it's kind of the same. Like okay. the residual sweetness is higher than I would have thought, but I appreciate it because it meant I didn't have to do anything in post to like back sweeten it with more of the syrup. Yeah. Like it ended in the, in the lower 10 teens, which shocked me for a whinies, but pleased me as a lazy brewer. I want to use yeah. this for a... <laughs> A gin and tonic, except it would be a gin and juice. Yeah. It screams it's summer, just, though. We've been sipping on it very slowly yeah. all summer long. So how so. old is this? Uh, yeah. Maybe a month and a half. It's well aged. <laughs> yeah, it might half. be two months. A month and a half. It's like wow, okay. not even as old as a beer. Yeah, the <laughs> problem is that the, the gas ran on the keg. It was super spritzy and carbonated. The gas, unbeknownst mm. to me, ran out. So I had to emergency bottle it and flip top. So it lost a little bit of that spritz. But okay. clearly, you notice that it's still spritzy. Oh yeah, definitely. yeah, it's definitely and, and it's it's really close to us. It it drinks like a soda. I almost get a little it's, bit of cream soda ness out of it, but I think that's almost psychological from drinking something that clear. Although cream yeah. sodas are sometimes kind of yellow. I wonder if orangey. homemade craft pseudo pops are going to be a a thing. We had pseudo pop meaning al actually alcohol. Yeah, or just well, craft we had sodas? one. We had one at the pig out. That was similar. I don't Skeeter know what pee? I don't know what went into that, but it was also a very drinkable. I believe it was clear. It was a uh, somewhat high in alcohol, and it was just a sweet carbonated homemade beverage. Maybe we're just going back to the days of moonshine, where people are so tired of like <laughs> northeast IPAs and kettle sour and everything that we're like, well, what can we brew with our backyard? Like scratch brewing in Illinois, or like uh, Forbidden Root in Chicago. I mean. Wild These are people that are already doing this. It was a success, I Cheers. think, as experiments go, right? As, you as don't far know as what, two and a half gallons of something to drink, well, you know, there could be what, something a lot worse than that. You cake. don't know what you're going to oh, yeah. get. <laughs> Very drinkable. Till the next adventure, the Pine Series, the Pine Cone Series. <laughs> if you're a fan of citrusy beverages or light summer sippers or just brewing with local ingredients, I suggest making spruce tip wine. I'm going to try it again this year and aim for a bit higher original gravity, as was my original plan, for something that truly lives up to the name Spruce Tip Wine. Find the recipe for the simple syrup, including some notes about fermentation, at chopandbrew.com. Chop for chop and spruce for spruce. That was it. Ah, was is that a, a sufficient production value. tasting? I think so. Production value is overrated. Spruce juice. This is, <laughs> is that the end of your video? That's it? But I trailed off there. It's amazingly <laughs> clear. Trailed off in a stuporous man manner. It tastes like Zima though. I really I like Zima. So Zima was like this malt beverage. Alternative. It was really popular, I think, with I mean, it's not women anymore. more, but that it was I don't just... Know. I'm not sure. It was what? It's like a neutral grain spirit meets okay. Sprite. It's like, but a, there was... just like a malt liquor. Okay. Yeah. Well, it never hit Europe. And but it was this weird thing... The first time it was here, it was 2011, so I guess that's why it never hit. It's this weird Zima? thing, though, where people would put, like, Jolly Ranchers in it, like, at parties. That was the weird thing. You'd put, like, a grape it Jolly Rancher... Gross. Oh, next funny thing. So I don't it would know what give, a Jolly Rancher is. It would give... God dang it. You don't? No. Oh, okay. It would give color to the Zima, candy. but you don't Different. understand either Fruit of these references. Because he's from Austria. He doesn't know Zima. <laughs>
I don't know Jolly Rancher. I don't mind us mixing in some. He's like, I don't know he what high fructose know how to corn syrup is. Like. <laughs> I don't know what diabetes tastes like. <laughs>